Hey there, and welcome back to the Big Commerce Best Practices series. Um, as mentioned prior, you can get a link to the whole series in uh, below this video. And uh, really appreciate you guys being here. I want to help make everybody, um, you know, able to do a better job on Big Commerce. And so in this video, we're going to talk about color variables and mix-ins. All right, so let me share my screen. And we're going to create a mix-ins file. Now, if you're going to do a lot of big commerce development work, having a mix-ins file is nice. It's a place where you can keep some of these, um, you know, CSS type almost functions. You, you can kind of in, end up creating your own boilerplate. Uh, and it also is, is a good way to reduce your code um, that you're that you're putting on the page. So. You know, we're finding that the more we do mix-ins and use variables, the less actual custom CSS we need. So the CSS file ends up getting shrank quite a bit. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to define a file. And we're going to come in here to the custom folder that we already create, created. And we're going to call it custom. And then we're going to put a dash mixins.scss in there. <laughs> custom dash mixins dot s css now we need to reference this and the place that we're going to do that is we're going to do it from inside the custom scss file so if you remember on a prior video i went over adding the the uh, reference to import the custom css file from the theme css and because we want the mixins to actually load uh, prior to the actual custom CSS that we're going to um, create, we would need to either reference it in here, which means that we would need to define our variables probably completely in custom mixins and not in custom CSS, um, or we can reference it from custom CSS. So what we're going to actually do is in custom CSS, we're going to put an import right up here we're going to say import custom mixins ding dong just like that so now if we need to put something that is above it then we can put it right here um, and if we want to put everything else in our css file it'll come in after the mixins so what the heck does all this mean right means that now our theme is going to load this but at the top of it it's going to stop take a copy break and load to custom mixins so one thing that we can do on a custom mixins is define some colors right and you can do this here or you could technically do it really anywhere but let's define some colors <clears throat> and say that we're going to have a black color, a white color, and let's say we're going to have a, and you could define like an action color or something like that here, but let's just say, let's just say we're going to have a blue, right? So let's say our black is equal to zero 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 our white is equal to f f f our blue i don't know what color blue is so let's just put blue and let's actually just use this color picker to change this a little bit let's say the blue is actually that blue and the white is actually going to be an off-white a little bit. We're going to call it like something like that. We're going to call it the black. Not quite black, but most of the way black. Um, so you can put it in, obviously, as hex or I guess the color picker did RGB. No big deal. But what's cool is <clears throat> if you haven't used variables yet in SCSS, this is not something you can do with CSS, but it is something you can do with SAS. So this is where you get in some of the sassiness of the CSS, not just the sassiness of the SCSS, not just the CSS, right? 
All right, so we've defined black as that. We've defined white as that. We've defined blue as that, right? So now we could come back into our, our body here. And let's say the background is equal to white. Now when we come back, let's see, which one of my tabs is it? this one yes let's change it to blue just so it's a little bit more noticeable oh well there goes the white it'll take a second then we'll then we'll be blue did i save it there it goes um all right so you know, now you can see that you know if you were able to just reference dollar sign blue, dollar sign white, dollar sign black, your CSS would be a lot easier to read. Plus, if you ever needed to change the shade of the blue, then you could come back into the custom mixins and just change the shade right here, and you wouldn't have to do a control find and replace like all that other stuff. Um, you could just change it all right here, which is really cool. But you can do something else, and this is something that I do a lot, is you could set up, say, some custom font colors, right? So we're going to say font and black, the color is going to be black, and I do an important tag on this. <clears throat> I'm not, you know, I'm not like crazy important tech guy but the reason that I do this is that I want to be able to apply this as a class and have it just override whatever the CSS is and so this will almost work unless there's a conflicting important tag but the idea here is to be able to create a couple mixins here and this is just one example you know of a type where we can say font dash blue we're going to automatically make that the color of that be blue Whoa. so the cool thing here is that if you had uh, let me just find a place so like let's let's come and inspect the uh the footer the footer headers right so um let's go into Components, common, footer, and so right here we have a foot, uh, the H3 for the navigate column. And if we look on the front end, how is it computing the color? So it's just pulling it from the H3 right now, which is set to 4444, right? Mm -hmm. But if we came in here and said, We'll just edit this H3 to add a class of font dash blue. Then when it refreshes, you can see that it turned the font automatically blue. We could also do something like, you know, font bold, for example. Oh, we need to put the and sign there. So that combines the dot, that combines the font class with the dash bold. So then we can say font weight 700. And then if we went into that one again, it would say font bold. And this is really the same, you know, type of concept that you get with something like Tailwind CSS is like creating a couple classes that make your life easier so that you can do more while you're coding, but also reduce your CSS file size, which is just better and faster. It means you're defining font bold one time and you're not having to go back and forth to the CSS to, to get like 30 different applications where you're bolding 30 different things. You use the class and then it just needs to figure out what that, that class means, font bold. So let me just check my notes. So that's how we set up our mixins file. That's how we define color variables. And because you are using, um, you know, because you're defining these variables and this file is referenced at the top, it means that 
any of these variables work anywhere down line of this in the custom SCSS file as well. So technically, if we, I wouldn't recommend doing this because we put those important tags in there, but we could say on the on all of the H3s, go ahead and we could say, you know, color equals blue, for example. And you can see we just made all of the H3s blue, just like that. All right, so hopefully that'll help you guys reduce your CSS. Hopefully that'll help you guys be a little bit more sophisticated in how you build your SCSS files and how you really use the, the SAS part of this to the max. So think about that, and hopefully that helps you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.